Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where you'll hear stories about people who truly believe that the world revolves around them and that nobody else matters. Guys, I hope you're having a lovely day today. And before we dive into today's stories, you know I gotta show you some super Entitled People's posts on social media. So the first one, a lady goes on Facebook and says, So this man asked me out on a date. He was actually fine as hell, but when I asked him where we were going, he said, and I quote ladies, Applebee's. I burst out laughing at a silly cheap ass. I told him I own my own shop, a house, a BMW, and stocks. I can buy Applebee's. Then I walked away. You should have seen his face. I'm worth more than Applebee's. You have to impress me, and that ain't it. Ladies, keep them standards high as hell, and don't settle for a broke man. Guys, I'm laughing so hard at the I own stocks part. Who says it like that? How many of you are willing to bet that she doesn't own any of those things? People who are generally highly successful don't flaunt their success to complete strangers like that. What if he was the owner of multiple Applebee's? He could have been a millionaire who doesn't value materialistic things or fine dining. Like this man right here. This man right here who's sitting in a Dairy Queen. This meal right here is probably less than $10. And this man's net worth as of 2021 is $87.5 billion. Oh my goodness. And take a look at this post. This person says, I'm eating breakfast at a busy restaurant below my apartment. A lovely young woman just asked me if I could hurry up and finish my breakfast. Her friend is coming in 15 minutes and they want to take my seat. So I'll be here for the rest of today. <laughs> Oh boy, if that was me, super petty revenge to the max. I'd order a few more coffees, some more food, and just sit there just looking at it while playing Tetris on my phone. I love this person's comment right here. If you really want to drive home the message, pull out your sleeping bag. If you think those two people are entitled, wait until you hear the wild stories in this one. The first story is a nice and short one, where Karen tries to get OP arrested for buying too much beer. Imagine that, guys. The second story, a Karen takes advantage of a daycare. The third, OP tells a tale about his entitled lunch lady. And we'll finish up with an absolutely outrageous story where a Karen takes matters into her own hands and stalks an 11-year-old. What in the world? My friends, get ready to shake your heads because these people are super... Super duper entitled. I do hope you enjoy the stories today and hit that subscribe button for future stories if you aren't subscribed. So here's the deal. I drink a lot. I drink privately and I would never drink and drive. I'm quiet and respectful. I have a job, I have friends, I have a nice apartment and I've never hurt anyone. So most nights I like to chill on my couch with a drink or 10. Thus, I often walk into my apartment building with a case of beer or whatever I decide to poison my body with that night. Many of those nights, I've run into a certain middle-aged woman on the elevator, who we'll call Karen. Well, yesterday, I got a phone call from my landlord. Here's how the conversation went. I said, Hey Ray, what's up? He replies, Uh, I got something awkward to tell you. Okay, what is it? So, someone made a complaint about you. I asked, for what? My landlord says, So, another tenant called to say that you're an out-of-control alcoholic, and you always walk into the building carrying alcohol, and she wants you out of the building. I'm baffled and just say, Um, okay? There was a long pause, and we both start laughing. And he continues on and says, Yeah, and she said the next time she sees you with alcohol, she's gonna call the cops and have you arrested. I told him, Tell her I said good luck with that, and tell me how it goes. You can't get me arrested for being an alcoholic in peace, Karen. This lady definitely needs a nice cup of mind your own business. Guys, I can totally see it now. I've read enough entitled people stories to know that she may start filing false police reports if she doesn't get her way and she'll end up getting herself evicted. I work at a childcare facility and we're open from 8.30 to 4.30. We have strict rules about these times. 4.30 is supposed to be the last possible time you can pick up your child, not the time you start showing up. So, we have a policy to charge every 15 minutes past 4.30, but we tend to be nice and not to do that, if it's a one-off thing and you're there before 5. We have a child with an entitled Karen who's often late a lot. This year, she's had to pay late fees over a dozen times, and she always fights it saying, I pay you to watch my son, don't I? Anyway, this morning she comes and drops off her boy, and she comes up to me and says, I'm gonna be a bit late picking him up today. 
usually with the parents, that means they'll be showing up about 10 to 15 minutes after 4.30, which we accept. But I knew that this lady wouldn't be doing that. So, sure enough, I ask her what time she expects she'll get there, and she says, Hopefully 6.30, but no later than 7. I have to do some Christmas shopping. And I was shocked. She's been told again and again that 4.30 is the latest she can pick him up. I replied, uh, that's not going to be possible. He needs to be picked up by 4.30. I told her any later than that and she's charged. After 5.30, we call the police if we can't get a hold of her. She answers with, but I have urgent Christmas shopping to do today and you'll just need to watch him. I reiterate the policy we have and she says, you've said yourself that my son's a great kid. You should feel lucky to spend time with him. I thought you worked here because you love kids. Or, or do you just do it for the money? So at this point, I'm starting to rage inside. But I can't yell in front of the kids. So I smile, I tell her again the policy we have on pickups, and I tell her to speak to the manager if she doesn't believe me. So Karen laughs and says, just do what I pay you for and watch him. And she walks off. I tell my manager who calls her after lunch to remind her that he needs to be picked up by 4.30 the latest. Apparently she laughs it off and says she'll pick him up, so we hope that's that. 4.30 rolls around and her son is now the only kid here. We keep him entertained while we clean up and she's called but doesn't answer. By 5 o'clock, my manager calls saying that if someone doesn't answer the phone or come pick him up, we'll have to call the police. We try the emergency contact numbers, but one is a friend that's already out of town for the holidays, and the father doesn't pick up. We wait a bit, because having the police here will upset the boy, but by 5.30, we don't know what else to do. I call once more, and she finally answers. When I tell her she needs to come collect her son now, the conversation goes like this. Karen says, I told you I was going to be late, and I told you that wasn't going to be acceptable. You're lucky we haven't called the police already. Karen says, Don't you dare threaten me. You knew I was going to be late. I told you I needed to do Christmas shopping. I told her that's no excuse. You need to come get him right now or we'll have to call the police. And Karen responds, You really know how to ruin Christmas, don't you? I just wanted to get some presents. I told her, look, just come pick him up now. So with that, she hangs up and at around 5.45 she pulls up. The manager tells her that this was serious and she'll have to take it to the board to see if they're going to take it further. So yeah, Karen loses it saying we've ruined Christmas and that she could have all of us fired. She also says that her family's used to the VIP treatment in this town because her husband makes a lot of money and she's disgusted that we don't understand that. To top it off when she's asked to leave, she grabs $10 out of her purse and says, Here, I've paid for the extra time. Get over it. He's an angel to look after. I really, really dislike people like this that don't understand that people who provide services also have a life outside of their job. Expecting a daycare to watch your kid for an extra two hours after they're closed just so you can do some shopping is absolutely super duper entitled. If he was such an angel, she should have picked him up and taken him shopping with her. I'm a 16 year old guy and I'm pretty normal. I play video games, hang out with friends, have a good job, I do all that. But the only abnormal thing about me is I have type 1 diabetes. I've been diagnosed for about a bit more than a year and a half. I've kept good control over it, and the doctors are always impressed when I have a checkup. Bragging aside, I'm a junior in a pretty small high school in the middle of Kansas. One of the things I do is take insulin 10 to 15 minutes before I eat, so it has time to get into effect. Now, with the school lunch, there's two options, a chicken salad or a cheeseburger. I decide to go with the cheeseburger. I take my insulin and go up the line. There are two separate tables each, with two white to-go boxes with food in them. I grab a box from the left table, and before I take two steps, my friend points out to me that that's the salad. I set the box back down and go grab the other box, but the lunch lady shouts at me and says, Hey! Don't you dare! I look at her, and she looks at me like I just slapped a puppy in the face. I ask what's wrong, and she says, I already grabbed the salad, so I have to take the salad. Note, I did not even open up the box. I explained to her that I'm a diabetic and I took insulin. She shakes her head and in a sickly sweet tone she says, I'm sorry, that's not my problem. Take the salad and go sit down now. I tried once more to tell her the situation, but she just pointed at the salad table and tells me to take the salad or I don't get anything. I'm a little pissed at this point, so I take the salad and go to my table with my friends and tell them the situation. 
So, they removed the vending machines from the cafeteria over the summer, so there was no way for me to get the correct amount of carbs without stealing another kid's cheeseburger. One of my friends tells me that I should go to the principal quickly, before the insulin fully sets in. I go to the office and tell him and the counselor the situation, a little panicked because it had been well over 10 minutes since I took insulin. I'm very tight with the principal, so he walked me back up to the cafeteria and talked to the lunch lady. He tells her, Lunch lady, give him the cheeseburger, he really needs it. She responds to him by saying, But he already took a salad, he can deal with it. The principal just sighs, grabs the cheeseburger box, and shoves it into my hands and tells me to go sit down. So, I go and sit relatively close to the lunch line, so me and my friends can barely hear the principal talk to her. He said, How you acted was truly out of line. You need to understand that you need to treat his and other diabetic kids' situations with care and understanding. He went on for another minute and ended up just telling her off and heading back to his office and I ate in peace. I'm glad she got told off and maybe she'll know better next time. I wonder why that was such a big deal to the lunch lady, that OP swapped the box that they accidentally grabbed. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, right? You grab a box, it's the wrong box, and you should be able to put it back. I wonder what sparked her to snap at OP like that. So basically, there was a little girl in my son's class, they're both 5th graders, who would say that my son was picking on her. At first, we believed the teachers and her and would discipline him at home, but his story was always consistent that he wasn't doing it, and he started gathering witnesses who confirmed that he was not picking on her at all, and there were never people corroborating her stories. The stories also frankly didn't sound like him or anything he'd do, so I asked around, and his classmates said it was her picking on him and the other kids by pushing them. We also learned that she had put a love note in his backpack, and he didn't notice it and left it crumpled in there for a few months without being addressed. It was right around the time that she sent it that the accusations of him really started. Now, you would think that this story would end with just a few calls to the principal and the parents, but it didn't. The girl's mom started showing up at school to stalk and stare at my son during breakfast, lunch, and dismissal. She also tried to get him kicked out of the sports team he was on, and the mom even sent letters to the other kid's parents saying that my kid was a horrible kid, and they shouldn't let their kids play with him. She would also spread the same thing by word of mouth. I felt completely overwhelmed, because I worked and did not have the ability or relationships with the other families to correct this craziness. I also tried talking to the Karen mom directly, but she denied that her daughter could possibly make up stories, saying that this is not how she raised her. She also denied stalking my son, as that would be crazy. I read the letter that was sent to the other parents, and she acted like it was totally normal for her to do that. Then, one day, she brought along her much older son to breakfast, who physically attacked my kid. When the principal told her that this situation had gotten out of hand, and she couldn't bring her older son to school to intimidate students, she declared that she was going to start homeschooling her kid instead. My son is starting a new school tomorrow, and he keeps asking me if any other moms will do that to him again and if I will ever go to school for lunch to make sure no moms stalk him. I keep thinking about this situation, like, what the heck? So OP does leave an update, and the update reads, A lot of people say that I should contact a lawyer or press charges for the stalking. I am a lawyer, and in all my communications with the mom in the school, I used all the magic words to let them know that I was serious about this. I also filed a formal complaint with the school that's well documented. I also consulted with several friends from law school, one who works in educational law, and one who handles restraining orders and stalking. But sadly in Texas, there's no way a complaint like this would have been taken seriously. Even though this is completely bananas, the level of harassment they want to see is quite high, because the judges are very sensitive to violating anyone's rights with a restraining order or prison. And while my son was physically attacked, he was not beat up or injured. I explained this in the comments, but basically the older kid used his body to intimidate him while making comments like he was small and he needs to stop messing with his sister. Now, if it happens again, that would be a different story given the history, but hopefully now he's starting a new school and we won't ever have to deal with this family again. This is such a crazy story and it got more and more insane as it went on. It totally sucks that OP's kid now has a fear of this happening at a new school. I also can't believe the woman got her son to basically come and intimidate and attack OP's kid. That was definitely, definitely crossing a line. And that brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, if you enjoyed your time with me today, do hit that thumbs up. If you missed the last episode of our slash entitled people, a Karen puts down a sign on private property 
apparently giving her the rights to destroy the land. Guys, the story is absolutely redonkulous. Is that even a word? Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.